A young man stands in his bedroom. It just so happens that today, the 13th of April, is this young man's birthday. Though it was 13 years ago that he was given life, it is only today that he was given a name. What will the name of this young man be? You choose to enter his name. Zeus Mel Poop Lord. Try again, smartass. John Egbert. Yes, let's go with that, shall we? John Egbert decides to examine his room. Your name is John. As was previously mentioned, it is your birthday. A number of cakes are scattered about your room. You have a variety of interests, but you have a passion for really terrible movies. You like to program computers, but you are not very good at it. You have a fondness for paranormal lore, and you are an aspiring amateur magician. You also like to play games sometimes. What will you do, John? John will quickly retrieve his arms from the drawer. Your arms are in your magic chest, Poop Lord! Remove the cake from the magic chest for him. Out of sympathy for John's perceived lack of arms, you pick up the cake for him and put it on his bed. John quickly retrieves his arms from the magic chest. You receive your fake arms from the chest. You use these for hilarious antics. You capture lock them in your Silidex, but you have no idea what that actually means though. There are other items in the chest. Go on John, look inside that chest. In here, you keep an array of humorous and mystical artifacts, each one a devastating weapon in the hands of a skilled magician or a cunning prankster. You are neither of these things. Among the artifacts are two fake arms currently capture logged in your Silidex, one pair of trick handcuffs, one stun sword, one magician's hat, one pair of beagle puss glasses, several smoke pellets, several blood capsules, and one copy of Colonel Sasuke's daunting text of magical frivolity and practical japery and one copy of Harry Anderson's Wise Guy by Mike Caveney. Some of the stuff may come in handy at a later point, but for now, you just decide to take the smoke pellets. You stow the smoke pellets on one of your capture log cards in your Silidex. You still aren't totally sure what that means, but at least you're starting to get a hang of the vernacular at least. You have two empty capture log cards remaining, and John tries to equip his fake arms. You aren't totally sure if a quip is the verb to the of the abstract behavioural medium in which you dwell. You give it a try anyway. Unfortunately, you cannot access the fake arms. Their card is underneath the one you just used to capture lock the smoke pellets. You have to use the pellets first in order to access the arms. But this is probably unadvisable since you just make your room lousy with smoke. Your Silidex's fetch modus is currently dictated by the logic of a stack data structure. You were never all that great with data structures and you find the concept of and mildly irritating. But with any hope, perhaps you will advance new, more practical fetch modi for your Silidex with a little more experience. John chooses to look at his problem sleuth poster. Is it even possible to get any more hard-boiled than that? <laughs> you really doubt it. This poster was one of your wisest purchases. There is a nice spot on the wall next to it, and you've been meaning to hang another poster there soon. But there is a note on the drawer, and for now you should probably read it. <laughs> Happy birthday, son. I am so proud of you. The note is rich with the aromas of fatherly aftershaves and colognes. Beside the note is a rolled up poster. Take the poster. Another birthday artifact! Wonder what is printed on the poster? You'll need some way to hang it on your wall. You should probably acquire some hammer and nails as they will come in handy. Especially for just such an occasion. You first place the hammer into your Silidex, but for now all of your capture log cards are full. You wonder what will happen if you try to take the nails? I guess it doesn't hurt to try. You capture log four nails into the top card and push all the artifacts down the card. The fake arms are pushed entirely out of the deck. Oh well, they're probably completely useless anyway, but you don't want to do that again unless you want to drop the smoke pellets and suffer the consequences. In any case, you feel like you have gathered enough things to get down some business and do some really important stuff. The next thing you do will probably be exceptionally meaningful. And suddenly it passes through his mind that he should squawk like an imbecile and shit on his desk. This is the dumbest idea you've had in weeks. Stupid, stupid, stupid. And yet, the polished surface of your desk, it beckons. Instead, you merge the top two cards, combining the nail with the hammer. The hammer and nails are now capture logged on the same card and can be used together. And now this places it in an ideal position to use it on the poster. You use the hammer and nails in conjunction with the card beneath it. Now you may nail the poster to your wall. 
He used the hammer, nails, and poster on the blank space on the wall. Oh, it's glorious. Exactly what he wanted. The old man really came through this time. But for now, John chooses to put the air poster. Put the bunny back in the box. I said, put the bunny back in the box. Why couldn't you put the bunny back in the box? Morgan Freeman's genteel, homespun mannerisms were perfect qualities for a president residing over a crisis. Oceans rise, cities fall, and hope survives. Wow. Films about the impending apocalypse fascinate you. But the black president, now you've seen everything. After examining your calendar, you realize you've marked your birthday the 13th of April. Another day you marked was supposed to be the arrival date for the highly touted Suburb Beta launch. It's been three days already. It's starting to become a sore subject with you. But perhaps you should eat some cake. You are sick to death of cake. You've been eating it all day and you have no intention of clogging your cylinder with it either. The cake stays put for now. You hear a notice from your computer. Someone is messaging you. You pull up to your computer. This is where you spend most of your time. You decorated your desktop with some rather handsome wallpaper which you made yourself. You're really proud of it. Your desktop is also listed with various programming project files. You are so bad at programming sometimes you wonder why you even bother with it. Your pester chum application is flashing. Someone is trying to get in touch with you. Only one of your chums is logged in. He sent you a message. Hey, uh, what sort of insane loops are you making today? Got a little monster's poster. It's so awesome. I'm gonna watch it again today. The apple juice scene is so funny. Oh hell, that's such a coincidence. I just found an unopened container of apple juice in my closet. It's like fucking Christmas up in here. Okay, that's fine, but I have one question and then a word of caution. Have you seen a movie called Little Monster Sorry, Howie Mandel and Fred Savage? But the seal on the bottle is unbroken. Are you suggesting someone put piss in my apple juice at the factory? All I'm saying is don't you think Monster Howie Mandel has the power to do something as simple as reseal a bottle? Try using your brain, numb nuts. Why did the fat kid, or whoever drank it, know what piss tasted like? I mean, his reaction was nigh instantaneous. It was the 15th day in a row Howie Mandel peed now in his juice. Okay, I can accept that. Monster b celebrity douchebags are cunning and persistent pranksters. Also, Fred Savage is a really But who cares about this? Let's stop talking about it. Did you get the beta yet? No. Did you? Man, I got two copies already. But I don't care, I'm not gonna play it or anything. The game sounds boring. Did you see how it got slammed in Game Bro? Game Bro's a joke and we both know it. Yeah. Why don't you go check your mail? Maybe it's there now. You see the view of your yard from your window. Hanging from the tree is your tire swing. In a kid's yard, a tree without a tire swing is like a proper gentleman without a monocle. That is to say, he can hardly be considered a terribly proper gentleman at all. And there beside your driveway is your mailbox. The little red arm swilly dilly thing or whatever it's called is flipped up. What the hell is that thing called anyway? You do not have time for these semantics. The red flippy lever thing means that you have new mail and that means that the beta might be here. You are about to hurry downstairs when you hear a car pull into the driveway. It looks like your dad has just returned from the grocery store and oh great, it looks like he's been... If you go downstairs to get it, he will likely monopolize hours of your time. You decide to chill out up here for a while until the dust settles. Sometimes you feel like you are trapped in this room. Stuck, if you will. The sense that possibly borders on the titular. And now your chum is pestering you again. The clockwork of friendship turns ceaselessly, operating the swing lever dealies of harassment in perpetuity. Whatever, the dude can just hold his damn horses. You know, you've put countless man hours into this assortment of quality titles. But for now, you decide to consult with the Colonel's bottomless wisdom. Good grief, this thing is huge. You could kill a cat if you dropped it. But to really dig into this hefty book, you will have to capture log it. You are not really sure if you are ready to log down your other artifacts to eat it just yet. Capture log fake arms again. What did you just say? You don't want to clog up your- Oh, Jesus. In a momentary lapse of concentration, you accidentally capture log the arms again.